Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of GLP's 10 out of 10. And this week, we have with us lighting designer Tom Sutherland. British-born Tom is the founder and lead designer of DX7 Design, who have offices in London, Los Angeles, where we find him today, and Shanghai. Starting his career from when he was in high school, Tom soon moved into the world of television with stints as a moving light technician and programmer before progressing onto the role of lighting designer. DX7 has now grown to encompass a variety of different lighting genres, including live concerts, product launches, video specials, corporate events, and much more. Tom has been fortunate enough to have worked on iconic shows such as Strictly Come Dancing, American Idol, Britain's Got Talent, The X Factor, and Dancing with the Stars, as well as collaborating and creating shows with some of the world's most famous artists, including Beyonce, Jennifer Lopez, Pitbull, Rihanna, Elton John, Adam Lambert, and One Direction. Tom is Emmy nominated and was also the youngest designer to ever be nominated for a Knight of Illumination Award. In fact, he's been nominated five times and walked away with one of the coveted swords in 2018 for his design of the Pitbull Time of Our Lives residency at the Planet Hollywood in Las Vegas. Tom likes to make his designs feel fresh, young, individual, and innovative. He says, each show is an exciting challenge and says, I always dream respectfully and I always dream big. Welcome, Tom Sutherland. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Good. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. And obviously, you know, offices around the world now. So, so are things doing well around the world? Yeah. I mean, it, certainly pre-COVID, it was, it was insane. This, this time last year, we had projects, multiple stadium shows in, uh, in Saudi Arabia, we had stadium shows going on in China. We were in the midst of uh, the People's Choice Awards in Los Angeles, Dancing with the Stars here. And, and so it was just this period that I think was the most the craziest, the most exciting period of, of kind of my career today. Um, and then, of course, we all took a breather at the beginning of the year, not, right. not, not by our own choice. Um, yes. But now, yeah, still things, uh, things are, are picking up again and uh, are going well and are, and, are, and are exciting. We're picking up some really uh, interesting, innovative projects that uh, the formation of the COVID world that we're in. Right. That's great. That's great to hear. It's, you know, getting, pe getting people and parts of the industry, you know, back to work and back, back in the studios, back on the stages is, uh, is fantastic. So it's great to hear every, every time, you know, there are little anecdotes or, or uh, stories like that. So fantastic. Thank you. Um, all right, then. So the format, we've got our 10 questions. So let's, uh, let's kick it off with the first one. So what was your first show as a designer? So my first show as a designer was actually uh, the Red Hot Chili Peppers did a, a one-off concert for BBC's Radio One um, that was uh, televised on, it was called the Red Button back then where you could hit, it was almost like interactive on demand as we know it now. Right. Um, so it was done on that and also done online that BBC Radio One would kind of approach artists and pick a iconic London venue. Um, this one was Coco, which I think is actually closed down currently. Um, and so that, that was my first proper real gig as a, as a lighting designer. Wow. That's, that's, that's not a bad name to be associated with for you. No, no, I remember it was, um, there was an LD who I worked a lot with as, as his programmer, a guy called Roger Williams, um, who's still a great friend of mine. And, um, he got asked to do it, but he was doing another show up in Scotland. So it kind of filtered down the line to me. And it was, of course, one of those where you were like, all right, I'll give a shot. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I did. And what a, good, what a great first gig to pick up. Right. No pressure, though. Like, was it live on the, on the BBC or? Uh, no, no, I don't think we were live on this one. But, um, yeah, we're in front of a full audience. Of, of, I think that place holds just under 2,000 people. So, so yeah, a decent crowd. Right. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. Now, obviously, you know, working as, as internationally as you do all around the world with all these different kinds of projects, you've mentioned a few of them. Um, I'm sure at some point you've had a bit of a, you know, a spinal tap uh, moment where things just didn't quite go to plan. Um, so have you got have you got one you were able to share with us? 
Oh God, yeah, there's a few. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly. I think what I've always found tricky about whenever you work in different territories is, is you're in their world. So, so they're bringing you in as, as the international expert, so to speak, to, to deliver what you do on a daily basis. And they're expecting the same kind of standard of product that, that they see on all of your showreels or pictures or YouTube videos that people are watching um, but but sometimes like the odds are just against you like you're you're dealing with local people and entrusting them in systems with uh, two three thousand moving lights in you're right. only able to take your your minimum crew of maybe two programmers and, and a gaffer or a crew chief um, and so you don't have your support network. And, um, and we've been in many a situations, I think, especially in China, where, for example, a, a massive arena New Year's show, I think three years ago, this one was, where they'd forgotten to book the generators. Oh. And so we have a six hour live show on um, New Year's Eve, and uh, we're two days before this, and there's still no power to the rig. Oh. And this, uh, this was like two and a half thousand lights. So, I mean, it, the time you need just to get that system teched and up and running and focused and stuff alone, I would say, is a minimum of a week to 10 days before, like, before you'd even begin start programming the show. And, um, and I think we had two or three days to pull this entire thing together. And, and, and it's just like keeping your car. Like, you know then that you're in it <laughs> um, you know that potentially it's not going to be the the perfect picture that you'd ever imagine but you just have to deal with the parameters that you're you're kind of dealt with and um and as long as everyone clubs together as long as the team will know that's the case and and as an ld it's your job to keep the positivity and keep them driving forward so so that was certainly i think one of the most gulp moments that <laughs> sobering moments that I've, uh, I've had to deal with on something of that scale right that's incredible I, I can just imagine the conversation so i thought you ordered the generators no no i thought you ordered the generators <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah the, the chinese in a circle shouting at each other for what seemed like three hours and still no one had ordered the generators <laughs> right that's right yeah. you're sat there going ah oh, excuse me <laughs> Let's get an yeah. order first and then work it out afterwards. Fantastic. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, okay, so what's the uh, best piece of advice that anyone has ever uh, given to you, either professionally or, or otherwise? Um, I think uh, the best piece of advice professionally, I think, is just be nice and be respectful. Right. I mean, as, as long as... Like, no matter who you're dealing with, no matter who you're talking to, that person has a role. Whether that person is a junior person or is a senior person, they've been given a role in that production. And, and if they're coming to you with an idea, if they're coming to you with something creative, it's, I've always felt it's never my job to shoot, shoot that down. And, and I was kind of taught that by, by the people who gave me a chance in the industry, being the younger person. Um, and just to appreciate what everyone's doing and what every and what everyone is bringing to the production. So, so that was, I think, probably the best the best advice that I've ever been given, and that I've kind of always kept reminding myself on and and right. uh, strive to act on. Yeah, that's great. You're right. You're right. Absolutely. Everybody's there for a reason. Everybody's part of the team. Everyone's trying to 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 push the production further forward to a, to a better uh, and greater greater standard all the time I guess so correct yeah and it's it's about picking your battles also like sometimes you'll have an idea that that other people might not be able to envisage or see and and you know that you believe in that so those ones are, are worth pushing forward and, and pushing to the finish line and then there's others that people will obviously be stuck in their ways and knowing just when to pick your battles and sit back is is another bit of advice that I'm that I'll treasure. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, they're definitely wise words. That's yeah. right. that's for sure. Um, so so far in your career, what what would you say professionally is your proudest achievement? Oh, God, there's 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 been a few pinch pinch yourself moments. Um, 
I always find that they come they come on the opening nights of shows or when you're when you're in it and when either the lights go down for the first time or when you hear the eruption of an audience because until that point the stress is always there the mm. pressure is always there um, and and whether you whether you have a, a TV show that has so many so many kind of artists and you have just a chunk of time with each one to create their dreams or or whether you're doing a, a concert um, that that is a that is one artist who you've been dealing with for the past six months to a year who's invested in you and is trusting you to bring their vision to life. Mm. Um, that's uh, they're the, they're the moments that I think once when you're when you're in it and it's that the lights go down or or you go on air. They're the moments that I really I really pinch myself at. Um, I think probably the main key moment of that for me was was we did we did Westlife's um, the Irish bands uh, tour last year and it was there them coming back together after after a good few years. And um, there were several things that went wrong in the production and the rehearsal time frame. Um, that that it was to a stage where we all thought, "Is this going to happen? Are we actually going to get through this?" Right. Um, and and kind of my team clubbed together. We all looked at the cards that we'd been dealt, and and it meant we were there from nine a.m. in the morning through to six seven a.m reprogramming the show because of because of different things that had, had gone wrong whether it was with music whether it was elements of the set that weren't built properly or something um and so it, that i think because the pressure was on so much and and the time frame was narrowing throughout that whole week of rehearsals so rapidly that was certainly i think when when the house lights went out and when the crowd go wild, that was one big sigh of relief, and <laughs> a proud moment that I um, that I still treasure now. Yeah, <laughs> Pull it all together, and as the with everything everything stacked against you by the sound of it. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and, and moments where you just say, like, "There are a couple on there. I thought, I don't know if we're going to make this. I honestly don't right. know. If we're going to make this." And and when you have the res uh, responsibility of of the artists and their dreams on your shoulders as well. It's 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 a lot. It's a lot, and and you just have to keep your head above water and know that you'll get there and trust the people surrounding you. Um, right. It's is something. Yeah. That's incredible. Incredible. Yeah. That's brilliant. And and I think that's it. It's that's one of the things at the moment, of course, as we're as we're going through the whole pandemic. Is is I've heard so many people say that's that's what they miss. You know, is 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 even if they're doing something, you know, in a, in an AR studio, uh, but not having the audience there and not having that reaction is, uh, yeah. you know, yeah, it just makes a great big hole in, in what everyone's doing at the moment. So it's yeah, great. yeah, indeed it does, and that's that's certainly why I like the balance between the different sectors of the industry that we work in. We're kind of really lucky to have the broadcast and TV side, and then the live side and the event side as well. Um, it's just a really nice balance. You get you get a nice sense of every sector of the industry and also you're able to pull in different creative elements from each of those and, and merge them together which is something I, I really enjoy right fantastic well you know fingers crossed hopefully it won't be too long before the <laughs> audiences start reappearing again yeah fingers crossed um so when you're not in the studio or not you know facing in some almost insurmountable odds in an arena somewhere uh, what do you normally do in your downtime um, I love to travel. If ever I can get a minute to 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 go and see part of the world that that I haven't seen or haven't explored, then then I love to do that. Um, my partner's the same as well. We um, it's hard between the the pair of us to find that time, but when we do, we'd love to pick a spot of the world that we've never seen and jump on a plane and go and explore for a week or so. Right. Just disconnect from the rest of the world, which I think is a good thing mentally. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Having that, trying to find that that balance and being able to to switch off at least from work and you know sometimes just go off the grid completely, I think is is more and more important. Um, yeah, yeah, I couldn't, I, want I couldn't agree, agree more. I couldn't agree yeah. more. Sorry. That sounds fantastic, excellent, idyllic. <laughs> um, 
obviously you you mentioned you've worked all around the world uh in, in in tons of different countries and different places with different people is is there a best venue that or a favorite venue that you have anyway Ooh, um favorite venue uh we did we did croke park in ireland um last year in dublin which which was very special i think whenever you're in anywhere that size and full of that amount of people and you're doing a live show just to, to I think that place holds around 80,000, 80,000 mega fans all going crazy. <laughs> like there's, there's no other better buzz in the world than that, especially when it's something that you've been a part of and something that you've worked for so long on creating alongside your team. Like just, just a place that size really does give you the goosebumps, I think. Right where everything obviously just comes together in the right in the right you know the right way you can have fireworks you can have pyro things are going off like yeah it's just somewhere like that that it's so massive and you just see people for days and they're all having the times of their lives that's uh yeah i think that that has to be one of the, the favorite places i've ever been in <laughs> there we go fantastic crow park in dublin right um if there was one album or one artist that you know if you, if you got stranded again you know as part of the pandemic we've all been you know spending some time at home um is, is there is there one album or one artist that you would just always want to have on your playlist or or, or with you at time oh oh that's a good question um <laughs> uh, one album or one artist i i'm the music i listen to is such a wide genre depending on what mood I'm in. Um, I'm a great fan of a Pandora playlist. Right. And so like, if it's a Sunday morning, the Sunday brunch one will come on. <laughs> if I'm like having drinks at home with some friends, then we'll like put the dance or pop music on. And, and I don't necessarily say I'm, I'm ever tied to one artist. I'll get like hooked on songs <laughs> that I really like, and then I'll play and I'll play and I'll play until I hate them. <laughs> and then... Uh, yeah, and then on to the next. Um, but no, I'm very much, I just love different genres of music. Um, and I've always been one of those geeky people who will kind of, whether it's like a, a dance music album, I'll always envisage in my head how I light it. Or if right, it's like right. a, a Chicago or Beyonce, I always think, oh, that's, this would look good for that, or that would look good for that. And um, yeah. that's kind of something that I've always done in my, my geeky lighting world. <laughs> No, that's great. I can remember doing that exactly. As soon as a song comes on, you can just see things starting to appear in your in yeah. your mind's eye. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, <laughs> that's brilliant. We 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 uh, have this this thing, you know, the the um, algorithms for you know Spotify, Pandora, you know, some of those things. Trying to work out, you know, which one's best. And I think some people are finding uh, some of them. You know, we, we're starting to see two camps appear. You know, Pandora on one side, Spotify on the other. So, yeah, 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 exactly. They're certainly, they're certainly doing well, both companies, I think. Yeah, no, indeed. I love them. Love them yeah, these, these things, right. Um, okay, so it, now if you could spin back in time and go and visit the teenage Tom and offer, you know, one piece of advice, what would, what would that be? Um, so I was, I was quite lucky when I was, when I was younger, I, my dad used to take me up to the, the BBC from kind of when I was 12 years old and, uh, and I would sit in the lighting galleries at, um, with some LDs who, who were doing kind of different, different TV shows back in Britain. Mm. Um, and I just, I'd sit back there and kind of think I was the luckiest kid alive. Um, and, and dream of, dream of where I am now. Um, and I think if I could go back, I, I was always so nervous and, and you were always put, I think anyone coming into the industry these days, put such pressure on themselves to try and be, be the biggest person that they can be in the shortest amount of time. Mm. And I think I'd just tell myself that it's gonna be all right. <laughs> like just take it one day at a time, get yeah. stuck in, love what you do, be involved, be nice. And I just tell myself, that don't don't worry about it. Like, you know, if you if you love what you do, if you're passionate enough about what you do, then then you'll you'll get there and you'll figure it out, and there'll be a way. And I think I I just I go back and I reassure myself of that. Great. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, that's that's very good advice. That really is. Uh, just kind of yeah, enjoy it. Yeah. 
you know, stop and smell the roses along the way, don't uh, exactly. Yeah, take the moment for what it is. Take a step back, look where you are, and just just appreciate it. Like right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah, but you're you're also right. You know, there is a a lot of pressure uh these days so it, it's it's something that that is is hard i think to achieve as well to, it's always, to again it's about finding some of that balance and being able to uh, achieve that early on in your life is, is yeah. not easy no i and i think kind of for, for students and people coming out of college and things i think it's even harder now i i was quite lucky and got involved with people when um the bbc were kind of letting all of their lighting people go and and ITV back in Britain were letting all of their lighting people go. And there was a, a kind of a shift of everyone becoming freelance. Hmm. Um, and so I was kind of jumping on with, with the crowds of LDs who were becoming freelance and were, were happy to take people under their wing and show them the ropes. But now I think there's such little kind of employment based things of people coming out of college and then going to work for, whoever yeah. on the kind of creative side i think it's tough for like it's it's very cutthroat it's, yeah. it's it's who you know and it's who's going to give you the chance really now which is how most people i see getting into the industry yes yeah yeah that's true that's true yeah there's lots more people coming through as well which is i think which is great to see for the industry because there's so many people who want to be involved you know and you yeah. see that through the number of uh university courses and, and college courses that are producing you know designers and programmers and 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 uh media programmers and all kinds of different different things yeah like but of course it does mean that there's more people entering the job place with it without it necessarily growing to the same speed yeah exactly and i think you're right the amount of courses from when when I was kind of coming up through the industry at like 16, there weren't hardly any of these courses. And now there's, there's so many and, and people are seeing, seeing this, this world of kind of designers and, and engineers and things on, on these big shows that are touring around the world. Like people want to do that. And so it's great that there are college courses and things, but there's just not, once you're out of there, I don't feel like there's a huge way to get into the industry and and kind of as involved unless you kind of know someone or someone's willing to take you under their wing right yeah so that's it getting get in contact with people yeah that's it pester 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 pester, pester. there we go for everybody who's watching pester, pester. <laughs> exactly <laughs> um okay so if you could sit down um for a cup of coffee with uh, with any one person they could be could be living they could be dead um who would that be ooh, 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 ooh. um I'll, i'm actually gonna say my grandfather here okay. he um he's a he was a man who was a commander of an, an raf base and he was he has stories from when he was all over the world some crazy ones some not so crazy ones some that i'm not sure he should have told me <laughs> <laughs> um, and he's just this man who's always just he could he can talk to anyone no matter how old you are and he's just the most charming man who has brought such joy to my life and i, I think has been a very good guide of of getting me to where i've kind of got to um and and I can just sit with him for hours while he'll regale like all of these stories and and it's it's great. I I haven't managed to get home because of COVID for for almost a year now, so I'm missing them. But yeah, he's he's one guy who I love to sit there and have a right. have a cup of coffee with <laughs> and put the world. Sounds, sounds fantastic. We'll have to uh, we'll maybe we'll have to get him on ten out of ten. Yeah, months. yeah. I mean, <laughs> how long have you got? Because he'll be here for hours. <laughs> <laughs> right. We'll run out of YouTube. <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> brilliant okay um and and as if by magic we're up to our final question already um so i realize obviously you're sitting in los angeles at the moment but we'll we'll, we'll make it the british so um you're going to get a phone call in a moment from the british olympic team and they're going to call you up to compete for them so it could be uh, either the summer games or the winter games that's your choice but the question is what sport are they calling you up for so so when i was younger i was actually a diver okay. um, yeah i was a, a, a springboard diver and i did that up until 
Well, I was probably about 16. Um, so I was a little Tom Daly without the abs, but, <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, that's what I did for, for a good amount of time. And then I kind of gave it up when I got more and more into this industry. So, right. so I think I'd probably pick that back up. It's quite a fun sport when I wasn't yeah. hurting myself going splat off a diving sport. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's an amazing thing to watch, you know, especially when people are jumping off backwards and getting all these spins and twists and everything in and still being able to not do a belly flop is incredible. Yeah, yeah no, exactly. I, I wasn't quite the best in the world, but, um, but I did used to love it. It was great fun. Yeah, yeah, absolutely fantastic. Brilliant. Oh, well, there we go. That's always that's always something fun to watch. So, yeah. Um, Tom, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much. Obviously, I know at the moment you're, you're, you're in the studio, you're doing some, uh, doing some work. So I really appreciate you being able to find some time for us no, thank um, you. And, and share these, these absolute gems of, of your, your story so far. And uh, yeah, and some great words of wisdom there and inspiration. So thank you very much. No, thank you so much for having me. Pleasure. All right. We look forward to catching up in person as soon as possible. Until then, yeah, stay safe. Yeah, thank you.